All right, my guest today on the Radio Random Network. She's from the small town of Laurel, Mississippi, and she has a lot of things going on. She was in the 2015 Macy's iHeartRadio Rising Star Contest, where she was voted the nation's top 25 rising stars. It's Samantha Landrum. How are you doing, Samantha? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I think we got it under control now. Good. No worries. Yes, indeed. So how is your day going? It's good. It is a, I'm, I'm in Nashville right now, and um, it's beautiful. It's 76 degrees, and sunshine is rocking and rolling today, so it's beautiful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you, uh, what you got going on here the past couple of, well, the past year or so. First and foremost, yeah. you recently signed with Reviver Records. Yeah, I've been um, I've been signed with Reviver. I was actually their first artist that they ever signed, and um, I signed back in was June of 2012, which is insane. Time flies by, but um, yeah, it's been it's been fun. I've released an album, um, Hometown, back in in March of last year, and um, top two top twenty uh, singles, and um, things are good. Things are really good. Busy is a good thing. So um, I'm enjoying it so far. Yes, indeed. Now, you, you are a very busy woman, but uh, coming from a small town of Laurel, Mississippi, did was music something, I mean, was that something that you did uh, as a child? Oh, yeah. I uh, My dad always told me that I, I sang before I talked. Um, I was lucky enough. My family has a tourist attraction there in Laurel, Mississippi, and um, Landrum's Homestead and Village, and it's a recreation of a late 1800 settlement. And um, we have tourists and field trips from all over the world that come to see us. And we do weddings and catering and all that stuff. So I grew up around it, and um, when I was, you know, three, four years old, um, that was my daycare. Uh, I worked with my parents, and... Um, I would just walk around the homestead, you know, singing, humming, all that stuff. So my dad built me my own personal stage, and uh, I did my first public performance at the age of four years old, and I haven't stopped since. Um, music has just been such a huge, huge part of my life. Um, and, I mean, music heals, you know. It's, it's helped me get through the best times in my life, as well as, um, the times when I thought I wouldn't get off of the floor in fetal position. So um, it's been fun, you know. Uh, Wall, Mississippi is a great place to grow up. I'm very blessed to have been born and raised there. Um, but there's not much music scene there. We don't have, you know, that many venues that are available. And so when I started coming to Nashville, um, my whole life changed. Because this is Music City, and um, right. everywhere you go, you know, there's opportunity. So, love being from Laurel, but I love being in Nashville. <laughs> well, at, at what age did, did all this come together? Did you decide to, to take that path and go to Nashville and uh, pursue your dreams? Well, when I was 13 years old, um, my parents took me to a Keith Urban and Carrie Underwood concert in Biloxi, Mississippi. And... Um, I, you know, obviously, I knew that I loved to sing. I, I loved to perform. And um, after that concert, we got in the car, and we were driving down the road. And um, I just said to him, Mom, Dad, I, I, want, I want that. That is what I want to do with my life. And um, they said, are you sure? And I said, I'm 100% positive. And so they are just the most encouraging and supportive family that I could have dreamed of having. And so from the moment that I said that, um, I started singing and performing and competing everywhere that I possibly could. And um, I got involved with the Colgate Country Showdown, which I believe it's the Texaco Country Showdown now. But um, when I was you know, 14, I made it to the regional competition mm-hmm. here in Nashville at the Wild Horse Saloon. And um, I lost to Johnny Bulford, who's one of my, my dear friends and co-writers. Um, who wrote A Woman Like You and um, Curly Bryce and Wow. So um, that's when it all started. I started traveling to Nashville from Mississippi, and I did that for about five years. I just really focused on 
you know, songwriting, networking, getting to know myself as an artist. Um, of course, you know, making relationships here is what's so important. Um, and so that's how it all happened. It was all a God thing. Um, the doors continue to open and I continued to walk through. So it's all, it's all worked out pretty perfectly so far. That's that's very 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 interesting, and it's awesome too to see that you're kind of just I guess uh, knocking the doors down. You also have your own uh, show, Grits and Hits, which is a cooking yeah. show on uh, Nash TV. Now, how did you <laughs> how did you go from being a uh, well, you still are, but how how did you go from music to cooking? How how, how does that work? <laughs> well, growing up in Mississippi, um, my grandmother lives right next door to me. She lives about 100 yards away. And um, like I said, you know, our family business is there. The homestead is in the middle. And like my house is on one side, my grandparents are on the other. And so I grew up in the kitchen with her. And um, she taught me everything that I know. Thank goodness. Um, I can cook like my grandmother. Not as good, but I'm pretty close. And I just love it. I love being in the the kitchen and I love cooking and, and trying new things. And so um, I, I met with one of my good friends, Stokes Nielsen, who, uh, is a part of the Lost Trailers, and he, he does all the videoing for Nash FM. And, um, so he was like, well, what if we did, you know, like a, a show about singing and cooking? And I was like, I am so down with that. <laughs> Two of my favorite things. Yes, and, indeed. um, so it's called Grits and Hits. And basically, um, any artists that come into, the NAS studio here in Nashville, um, they tell us, you know, what their favorite recipe is or what their favorite memory is in the kitchen of them growing up or something to that extent. And uh, we cook their favorite recipe and we talk about life on the road and life at home and just the music business in general. But it's a different perspective um, than just like a regular interview because it's a lot of them are just like my friends and um, so it's real relaxed. And it's food, so that's good. And uh, it just gives fans a different insight on who the artist is. And so it's a blast for me. I love it. I get to eat good food and talk to my friends and make good television. So I'm all in. It's awesome. Now, who are some of the guests that you've had on? Uh... Well, uh, we've had Justin Moore, Chase Bryant, Native Run, uh, or we've done probably 20 episodes. Let's see, Lucas Hogue. Um, there's been many. My mind's going blank right now. It's but, all good. Uh, any any yeah. any weird recipes or, or weird food? Nobody like said they they liked a rack of lamb or, or, or you know tongue of goat or anything that you had to cook up for them. Did you? Did did, did they? Any, no, any? <laughs> no. Um, Josh Thompson. We made a um, salmon dish, but he wants to come back on the show and do an elk recipe, which I've never tried. So apparently it's amazing. So hopefully sometime in the next few months we're going to get back with Josh and and cook some elk. Certainly. (laughs) I'm sitting here talking to the one and only Samantha Samantha Landrum. Lord have mercy. Uh, Well, Samantha, let's talk a little bit about your – your 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 album your ep that uh come out yeah. in late 2014 uh one of the title tracks hometown which is the name of the ep um can you give us a little uh insight on uh the song itself yeah um hometown is basically uh a love story put into the form of explaining it why okay let me start over Basically, everybody has a hometown, like mine is Laurel, Mississippi. I know it like the back of my hand. Um, It's always going to be my safe place to go to. Um, Like when I'm feeling down and I just need some like, you know, I just need to feel back down to earth, I go back home. And so basically, it's a love story. And it's just saying, you know, when when you find the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, you want to know them like the back of your hand. They need to be your safe ground to fall on. Um, You basically want to know them like your hometown. And so um, I fell in love with it the first time I heard it. And uh, I think it turned out pretty well. 
and um, people seem to have liked it. It was top 20, so that's very exciting for me. Um, but the title track, we decided to go with it because um, hometown, my hometown is so important to me, and so I just thought it was perfect. And um, it's actually been played at, like, two weddings. People email me all the time, and they're like, this is me and my husband's favorite song. We we played, this was our first dance song. <laughs> so it's just, it makes me happy that my, my music can impact lives um, to that extent. Yes, indeed. Now, there's another song, too. I don't know if it's on the, it may be on the EP. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll still need your shoulder. Yes, about my mom. I wrote um, I'll Still Need Your Shoulder when I was 15 years old. And uh, my, like I said, my family is truly amazing. Um, my mom and dad are the most supportive and encouraging people ever. And um, I lost my best friend in high school. He died when, he, when we were 16. And um, basically, my whole world just shattered. And uh, my mom was the only person who could picked me up off the bathroom floor, um, so to speak. And um, so basically I just wanted to, you know, write a song and, and tribute to her and the impact, impact that she's had on my life. She has been the one constant throughout everything. And so um, we wrote Off Me Your Shoulder, and it is so powerful um, for especially mothers and daughters, but, you know, as, like, the fathers and sons and fathers and daughters as well, because um, I'm lucky enough to have two wonderful parents and grandparents and, and just a great family, but not everyone has that. And But everyone has someone that they look up to in that way. Right. And so um, I've had so many mothers um, at my shows, just like the song starts and we get through the first chorus and they're like, bawling their eyes out and um so it's just it's a good feeling to know that uh something that i created um with one of my best friends dylan dixon um has that impact on someone because it's you know a daughter going off to college or a daughter getting married or you know going going to serve her country um it's, it's a lot of fun so for mother's day i got a lot of cool videos and emails and um, all that good stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna put it to radio um, sooner or later, um, hopefully, and um, get it out there. Yes, indeed. Now, what are your plans for the rest of the year? I mean, what, what, what kind of exciting stuff you guys got going on? Well, I'm gonna be doing a lot of filming and cooking, um, and then I'm also extremely involved in the NRA. And so we're doing a bunch of different disability shoots uh, for wounded warriors. And um, I'm also doing um, just some cool, like, charity events for breast cancer. And um, so we're excited. We're going to raise some money for our, our veterans and wounded warriors. And uh, we're going to make some good music and travel and do shows and uh, try to make people happy. That's my plan for the next year. <laughs> That's awesome. And by the way, I mean, we talked about you talking about the, doing a lot of cooking and stuff. You're from Mississippi. I'm here in Louisiana. Is there, is yeah. it, do you, how about the hamburger steak, gravy, and onions? Do you do that? Oh, my gosh. That's like my favorite thing. That's my comfort meal. Like, if I just need to you know, eat something that's not all that healthy, I'm going to cook that. It's, it's my favorite. Girl, we can be friends. I love it. Yes, we need to get together and cook. Maybe I can bring you on my show. What? That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Make it up to Nashville. I'll give you a holler. Yes, please do. And, uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Hamburger steak, gravy, little mashed taters. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Bring the redneck out in me. It's, uh, yeah, I'm hungry right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Hey. I need to get to the grocery store, man. Not when you're hungry. You don't do that. <laughs> I know. Walk out two thousand dollars later. Yeah, go in for a loaf of bread. Come out with fifty dollars <laughs> worth of stuff, which ain't much these days. But I know. Now, who are what, what? Other than cooking, what are some of the other stuff that you do um, when you're not when you're not uh, touring or, or, or recording or, or, or writing? What, what, is, what are some of the stuff you do for fun? Um, fun. Well, I uh, just started playing co-ed softball, and that's been fun. Um, 
<laughs> I'm really bad at it, but it's um, <laughs> a good time. <laughs> um, but I also, you know, my family, we love, you know, from Mississippi, we obviously um, have a farm and, and we love to shoot guns and cook out and have shrimp boils and crawfish bowls and all that good stuff. So, like, my, my definition of fun and relaxation is just being with the people I love and being outdoors and enjoying God's beautiful beautiful creation um, and just kind of, you know, keeping it real. Yes, indeed. Now, yeah. you, you said uh, the shrimp balls and the crawfish balls and all that good stuff. I'm yeah. hearing Baton Rouge now. Now, what is the, what's the crawfish like up in Nashville? Do they call them crawfish? They do. You know, it's just, I mean, I don't know. I'm used to, like, New Orleans-style, you know, crawfish. Right. And I haven't had that in Nashville yet. That doesn't mean it, it doesn't exist, but I just have not had our kind of crawfish up here right what did they put them in the uh like what they like crawfish fettuccine they do that or something yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty uh pretty interesting you you like to shoot guns too huh you're uh, uh i do yes i am a, a proud member of the nra and um i just love to shoot guns uh gun safety is obviously most important um but uh i i, I carry um obviously everywhere <laughs> i go <laughs> especially nowadays but um yes indeed yes yeah i do a lot with the nra um especially with you know like i said the disability shoot the charity event um for uh wounded warriors and um different um different other you know charities but um basically i just i love i love guns and I love just the different manufacturers. I love the company owners. We had a convention here in Nashville uh, a few weeks ago, and I'm sponsored by Henry Repeating Arms, the original uh, lever action rifle. Wow. And um, it's just a blast. It's uh, there's so many different types of guns, and there's so many different types of people that come out to see these weapons, and it's just fun. But of course, gun safety is most important. So. My dad taught me that when I was real young, so very yes, blessed. <laughs> yes, indeed. It certainly is. Before we go here today, I'm not going to keep you maybe a couple more questions, but um, first and foremost, being in Nashville, I mean, you're, you're surrounded by country, mu country music royalty pretty much. Have, yeah. you, uh, have you taken to or has anybody kind of taken you under their wings, uh, so to speak? Well, uh, not so much under their wings, but... Um, Vic Gill is one of my favorite people in the entire world. And um, I work here in Nashville um, at a restaurant um, downtown for almost three years. And Vince would come in, you know, quite quite regularly. And um, we just really kind of um, connected. We just, you know, kind of talked about mutual friends and, and stuff and even he just gives the best advice. So Vince Gill is probably my favorite person um in Nashville. Um artist wise, he's just amazing. But, you know, Keith Urban's my like hero. So <laughs> I haven't I haven't really got to hang out hang out with him, but um he's great. But yeah, Vince Gill for sure. He's just a good old boy who uh, loves music and and isn't afraid to, you know, give words of wisdom, which is so important. And relationships uh, here in Nashville are so important. It's the most, it's the most powerful thing that you have. Um, it's good relationships. So. Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, before I let you go and let you go uh, find you something to eat, there you said you were hungry. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> you any any advice for any up and coming singer songwriters or or anybody out there that maybe want to follow in your footsteps? Absolutely. Um, my my advice is, you know, if if you want it bad enough, and um, God has blessed you with a talent of whether it be a you know a voice or a guitar skill, which I do not have, um, I would just say you know play anywhere you can. Um, perform, 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 and practice, and just pray that God will open the doors and um, just keep a positive attitude because that's honestly the most important thing um, you can have in in your life is a positive attitude. 
and just wake up every morning and believe in yourself and, um, you know, make good relationships, get in with good people who, um, you know, for me personally, the most important thing is, is people who share the same love for Jesus Christ as me. And, um, so yeah, just, just keep going. Don't give up. It's, it's, it's worth it. It is so worth it. The payoff is incredible. Awesome advice. Her name is Samantha Landrum. You can get her debut EP, Hometown. It's available now on iTunes and Amazon, or you can go to her official website, SamanthaLandrum.com. And, uh, Samantha, it was awesome talking with you today. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you. And uh, if My I, pleasure. When I get up to Nashville, I will holler for you for that steak and gravy now. Yes, please do. <laughs> I, I would love to, to hang out and meet you and all that good stuff. I appreciate it so much for you taking time out of your day.